IMATS experience. I have a little bit of a haul and then I'm going to insert some vlog footage at the end. Unfortunately, I didn't get as much vlogging done as I wanted to. It was kind of difficult and I also, to be honest, forgot about vlogging because I was just trying to enjoy the moments as I was there. And it was really interesting to go with two people who are actual makeup artists. Their experience of IMATS was definitely more from, okay, this is work. Whereas for me, it was more like, ooh, makeup, I like makeup. So yeah, it was definitely a different experience for me versus them. IMATS is geared towards professional makeup artists. There were a lot of makeup enthusiasts as myself, but I was definitely getting the impression that it was for people who worked on cinematic and people in the film industry makeup characters and uh, beasts and superheroes, that type of makeup, uh, rather than regular everyday makeup. So my first impression of IMATS was that it was tiny. And this is coming from somebody though, bear in mind, who has worked uh, the CES convention in Las Vegas. I worked that when I worked for an MP3 player company and then I've also been, because I live in San Diego, to the Comic Con convention, which is huge, absolutely huge. So those two conventions are so much bigger than IMATS. I was expecting IMATS to be a lot bigger just because I've heard about people saying, oh, it's so intense, there's so many makeup brands and companies there. However, my impression of it was it was actually quite tiny. As compared to BeautyCon, it was a lot better and well-organized than BeautyCon. It does cost $60 and then the $4 processing fee. And then if you don't live in LA, you have to, have to also add the travel fee. But I guess for most conferences, people are traveling to it. And I'm just lucky that Las Vegas is pretty close, so it's not that expensive for me. And then San Diego, I live in San Diego, so I really would only have to drive down to downtown. Um, obviously, the three conventions, or the four conventions that I mentioned, two of them are geared towards beauty, and then the others, electronics, consumer products. A comic Con is more like comics, movies, TV shows, that type of thing. Comic Con and CES are really worth going to. IMATS is more geared towards professionals working in the film industry, and then BeautyCon is more if you want to meet beauty bloggers, vloggers, you know, Candy Johnson. That was the fun part about going to BeautyCon. So even though BeautyCon was completely horribly organized, I had to stand outside for like four or five hours. It was worth it because it was really fun meeting people that I watch on YouTube. Even though IMATS is geared more towards professionals, it was still worth going and I'm glad that I went, but I'm not sure that I would go again. And I'm not even sure that the two ladies I went with would be interested in going again either because they, tallied up their discounts and they said that they saved a total of $11 because they get a pro discount anyway if they were to buy the products online. I heard that MAC was only giving a 30% discount which for them is not good because they get 40% off anyway. So I'll go ahead and get started on my haul. The first item that I picked up is the Sedona Lace Brush Case. I considered picking up a whole set of brushes, but I was looking at the makeup crazy person that I've been trying to keep in check uh, told me just to buy the case <laughs> because a lot of the brushes that they had I felt like were duplicates and brushes that I already own anyway. They were having a great sale though. It was 50% off everything on Sunday because I went on the Sunday. I think if you went on Friday or Saturday, they were only doing 30% off. The brush set that I was considering getting was a great deal. It would have only been 40 something dollars that would have come with this cup and also with like eight or 10 brushes. But like I said, I wanted to keep myself in check and I only picked this up. And the reason I picked this up, even though I have a cylindrical brush holder already, is because it's about twice the length of that one. The other one is only gonna hold short brushes. This is gonna hold every length brush. And I think I picked this up for $12.47. Um, the next thing that I picked up was from Friends. And they gave me that nice little bag and it's the Visart palette in number four. What is it? dark matte. The reason I picked this one up is because it has unique shades that I don't necessarily own and then when I touched the sample it was just this buttery, beautiful, pigmented, wonderful. I just saw and was like I have to have this and I thought about getting the neutral one too but then I was thinking about my naked palettes which I love so much already and I decided okay I don't need the other ones but now I'm kind of regretting that I didn't pick another one up because this was only $55. This costs $80 at Sephora. 
Their packaging is a little bit clear plastic, like really? Mm, but I think it's for pros, so that's why it's no frills, whatever. But I've heard so much about this brand and I've always wanted to try it. So it was $55 and unfortunately I had to pay tax because stupid me, instead of giving cash, if you paid cash you didn't have to pay tax. I didn't know that, I didn't realize it. Um, and so I, most of the stuff I paid for with my card and I ended up having to pay tax. So, which is so dumb because the night before I went up there, I withdrew a bunch of cash. So I had the cash, but I like, for some reason in my head, I was thinking, oh, I don't want to like take out my wallet. So it's my fault. But yeah, the Visart palette. The second thing I purchased was from the booth called CC Fashion Brush and it was $2.50. I saw somebody else haul this when I was doing my research on what to purchase at IMATS and somebody else hauled this and I was like, I need that. It's not that well cut. I didn't notice until I saw it in person for myself, um, but it is a nose contouring brush. So basically you could pretty much do this yourself if you picked up a large eyeshadow brush and you just decide to cut a V into it yourself because the brush is really poorly cut, um, but it only cost me $2.50 and that's why I decided just to pick it up anyway. Um, and then the next item that I picked up was from Delium Tools. Delium Tools also gave me a cute little like reusable bag as well. I picked up the 944 Tapered Contour Brush. I've always wanted a brush that was like this. This actually reminds me a lot of the tapered brush from e.l.f. except it's round all the way whereas the e.l.f. one is flat. This was $9. I think it normally retails for $12 so I saved like a whopping $3. But I was at the show. I thought to myself, why not? That's the thing Jimba24 says to herself all the time, why not? I feel like a major hot mess today because I'm wearing very sheer coverage foundation so you can see all my freckles and I'm wearing a very sheer this is the buxom lip gloss so I feel like you can see all the different color pigments on my lips too and I have a headache and I have a sore throat and my ears kind of hurt and that's enough complaining I'm not trying to complain I'm just feel kind of off Bing was asking me are you gonna still go to the gym and I'm like yeah I'm gonna take my chances and see if I get full-blown sick um, but hopefully I don't did I mention that last week I had my ingrown toenails removed so I was on antibiotics so that my toes wouldn't get infected? TMI, I know, that's just the story of my life. Um, then the last thing that I picked up from the show was this Parnian Spirit Special, or I just call it Parnian, um, Parian Spirit Set and it came with a 16 ounce brush cleaner and a spray that was two ounces and then a little jar that you use to swirl your brushes in when you clean them and then two brush cleaning wipe thingy ma bobs. I think my friend who also picked this up at the show, she gets a pro discount and she says she saved a whopping 23 cents. So she was a little disappointed about that. Um, I on the other hand am not a pro, I don't get discounts anywhere so I saved on that. Uh, and then I got the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle and this is in the new packaging and I didn't pick this up at the show but my friend who gets a MAC Pro discount she picked it up for me so woo! This is what it looks like. I do love my highlight so uh, I know everybody's like, oh, I'm over the whole strobing, the highlighting thing. I'm not over it. I love to do my highlight. This part sparkles. We're in good shape. So IMATS was in three different halls. There was one little baby hall that had kind of strange, they had, I shouldn't say strange, but they had a lot of off brands in there. That was the first hall we went into. And after we left, I was like, oh, is this what IMATS is going to be like? And my friends were like, oh, it felt like Chinatown in there because they had a lot of like no name lashes or like um, no name makeup brands. They did have a couple. I think House of Lashes was in there. 
They had China Glaze. China Glaze was in there. A wig shop was in there. My friend actually purchased a wig from there. It was a tricolor wig. I'm going to insert a photo if I find it because it was so cute on her and I kind of regret not getting a wig myself because it was only $46, I believe. Makeup Forever was there. Kat Von D was there. Crown Brushes was there and NYX were there. I didn't get to see any of those booths because the line was too crazy and to be honest, for NYX, I could buy that at Ulta for 40% off whenever they go on sale, and then I can still use a $3.50 off $10 purchase. Um, so I didn't want to wait in line there. And then Anastasia Beverly Hills, their line was crazy also. Tarte, I was kind of like, Tarte was a brand that I was pretty obsessed with when I first started YouTube, and then I think it breaks me out. And I don't like their blush because I feel like it always creates a hard pan on top and I have to scratch it off. I still like Tarte's concealer, the Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. I still like that one. Um, but there's nothing from Tarte that's excited me lately. I feel like I'm a lot pickier even though I still go on crazy hauls. But I am pickier now. Let's see, Namie's had Smashbox, Too Faced, Stila, a couple of other brands, 40% off. Their line was absolutely crazy, and I didn't want to make my friends wait in that line with me. And I could tell that they were kind of like over it because they view makeup more as a job, whereas I was the only one who's like a fangirl of like, ooh, makeup, makeup. I felt bad making them wait for me at any booths. A few times, like when I was contemplating over which Delium tool to pick up, I could tell they were like, hurry up. So I tried not to take my time. Um, but by the time we went back to Nanny's, like Too Faced was all sold out. And I have the chocolate bar palette, which was like one of the only things they had left. I have it, I'm not too crazy about it anyway. So I wasn't that bummed that it was that everything was sold out. So that was my IMATS experience. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, sticking it through, even though hopefully before the middle of 2016, I'll have that area cleaned up, that area cleaned up. I have made progress in my makeup room. I've actually put the drawers on this side to me that's out of the camera view now, and that's starting to look more organized. I just don't have time to beautify myself as much as I would like to. That's okay because I love my baby girl. Thank you guys for still sticking with me and hanging out, um, even though I don't make videos as consistently as before, but I definitely, definitely want to be able to. So random days that I take off when Ariel is taking a nap, I'm still gonna continue to try to film videos. So hope to see you next time, bye.